Are there ways to recognise divine truth? Definitely. Divine truth has definite ways of recognising it. Divine truth has attributes and characteristics. And while many of these attributes and characteristics, there, there are many hundreds of these attributes and characteristics, you could probably list you know, 15 to 20 of them and discuss them. And I think that's probably what we need to do in these sessions is to list 15 or 20 of the attributes mm -hmm. and characteristics and then discuss those attributes and characteristics about how they define God's truth. The reason why we need to know that it has attributes and characteristics is because we need to recognise divine truth versus human truth. We need to see the difference because they're not the same thing. Divine truth has certain attributes and characteristics that are not contained in our own personal truth or in the human, humanity created truth. And once we understand the flavour, if you like, of divine truth, then we have this beautiful ability to recognise it whenever it appears in our life. Because it always has a unique type of attribute and characteristic and quality that human truth doesn't have. So it's sort of like a benchmark or a, uh, uh, a filter that we can test new ideas yes. through. Yes, and they are very simple filters that are logical to understand. That's the, that's the thing that I find very interesting, mm -hmm. is that people on earth believe it's so difficult to discover God's truth. But the reality is all of God's truths have a certain flavour to them. They have certain attributes and characteristics that are not present in humanity-created truth. So a lot of the religious truth on the planet, once you examine it through the eyes of these particular attributes and qualities, you, you can dismiss much of it because you can see immediately that it can't be true, mm -hmm. right? Through just some logical statements, it cannot be true, in fact. But, but once we analyse all some of the different flavours of the qualities of divine truth, you can see there's emotion involved and everything. So there's a lot of different things involved in the flavours and attributes and characteristics of God's truth. So what I quite often liken it to is it's almost like a, it's like a dish, I suppose you could say, a meal, you know, that you're having. Now, some meals that people have, uh, that people create, are pretty terrible, actually. You know, they're almost inedible. And we find that particularly when we're a vegan because it's like people give us things and go, how, I don't know how you can eat that. And we go, we, I don't know how we can eat that either. Or how you can how think that you can this is what we think usually that that's eat. what we eat. Yeah. <laughs> and because there's no flavour, there's no, you know, there's a certain flavour once you start to create with spices and all these different things. Now, it's the same with regard to God's truth versus human truth. God's truth has, has all these unique types of flavours and spices, if you like, to it, or what, what I would classify as attributes and characteristics or attributes and qualities that you can list, in fact, and apply to each human created truth to determine whether it's a part of God's truth or not. And once you have that list of attributes and qualities of truth that are all logical and easy to understand, you can then look at the human created truth, the, the human ideas that, that people say are truth but are not often truth, and we can apply each attribute and characteristic to it. And when we apply those attributes and characteristics, we can see, no, it doesn't fit. It doesn't fit the mould, if you like, of what God's truth is all about because each of God's truths has certain attributes and characteristics. And so I feel it's very, very important to have a discussion about what the attributes and characteristics of divine truth are. Mm -hmm. And if people can understand them and see how they can apply them in their personal life, they'll be able to quickly identify a truth in comparison to floundering around, you yeah. know, or foundering around... <laughs> Uh, in the darkness, you know, always not knowing. Because, you know, and there are so many things that people on earth want to believe are true, but once you apply a few of these characteristics to, to what they want to believe, you can see they cannot be true for, for very, very simple reasons. So, um, so these attributes and characteristics then become, if you think about it, one of the, some of the most important things you could ever understand mm -hmm. and ever apply. And this is where I feel a lot of people who have heard divine truth for years, you know, they've listened to our presentations, listened to the different uh, explanations of different things. They still do not understand these basic characteristics of divine truth, the basic attributes of it. And as a result, they still ask a lot of questions they don't need to ask anymore. 
once you understand completely the attributes and characteristics of divine truth, there's only a few questions you have to ask in order to determine whether something can be true or not. Mm -hmm. and, and that is wonderful because it helps you filter out all of the ideas and concepts of humanity, of which there are millions of books written. Yes. And you're able to filter all that out and work out which bits can actually uh, are worth even listening to based upon the attributes and characteristics of divine truth. And I think that's a wonderful thing. Yes. And if a person who is studying divine truth just did that, they would have an amazing changes, amazing changes in their personal life. They'd have amazing changes in their understanding of the universe around them. They'd also have amazing changes within their soul that would start to occur as a result of just understanding these basic attributes and qualities and having a grasp of them from a feeling from an emotional perspective. So they'd have to have both a logical or intellectual and emotional understanding of these particular qualities and attributes. Once that happens, it's very, very hard after that to feed them an untruth, to feed them an error, and they actually go along with it. Because, because every error that comes along, you can go, does this match that? Does this match that quality? Does this match that quality? And, if you, and you only really need 15 or 20 of these qualities or attributes of divine truth to know whether something's right or wrong, right from the beginning, and whether it, whether it, whether it invites more of your investigation or whether you can dismiss it almost immediately is determined by whether it matches some of these very basic qualities of God's truth. Great. Well, we'll have to discuss them in later questions. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And in fact, if people refer to the later sessions uh, that we have on divine truth, they'll see we'll list each quality that we list. And, and the qualities are not exhaustive. The, the attributes are not exhaustive. We're not creating an exhaustive list because there are many things that we could add to it. But if we list 15 or 16 primary ones and show you how the person can apply that to all sorts of issues in their day-to-day -day life, they'll get an understanding. And once they have that understanding, it's very easy to determine truth after that. Great. All right.